You're listening to Talk Daredevil, a podcast about all things Daredevil in the greater Marvel Universe, brought to you by the women behind Saved Daredevil. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Talk Daredevil, the podcast by the Saved Daredevil team that's dedicated to covering everything Daredevil. And today we are ready to cover everything we know right now and don't know about Daredevil Born Again, which officially started production two weeks ago. Um, I'm joined today by three lovely team members. Hi, I'm Aisha. Hi, I'm Christine. Hey, it's Shelby. And, you know, it's been a minute, but we are so ready and so hyped to kind of jump into everything that we know right now about Daredevil. Um, If you've been on the internet at all, you know that there's been so much going on. So we really wanted to take the opportunity to sit down, break down what we know as facts, what we know as speculation, and, you know, take a little bit of time to discuss what we think might happen um, with this show uh, moving forward in production. So let's jump into it. Also, let's just kind of pause to appreciate the fact that they are shooting this in New York. Oh, yes. In New York City. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think is um, something we didn't, I mean, not something we could have taken for granted, say, like a year, a year ago. It's been, it's such a big deal. I can't remember going back like eight years ago now, if it was, I mean, I know there were, there were pictures then, but this, Mm -hmm. these first two weeks, there have been so many people trying to get (laughs) <laughs> to any any kind of picture, any kind. Here's a news van. Here's the outside of a courtroom. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's very significant that it's happening in New York because, you know, all the previous productions for Disney Plus were on Atlanta. And that's what we expected, that if uh, if you would ever get Daredevil back, it might be in Atlanta. It would be fake New York. But no, they are actually in real New York. Yeah, it so. feels very much like when they were shooting the previous seasons. Um, and that's that's very exciting. It's exciting because it, it brings back those feelings and those memories from back in the day. <laughs> we are getting out the kitchen. That's, <laughs> yeah, I know that. That's the what production title. Yeah, the working title for the show. Um, it's very exciting that they're in production now because it means that we will hopefully continue to know things. Um, but I think the long, for the longest time, the only thing we knew was that we had two showrunners on, Corman and Ord. But since then, you know, we've had a, a, a full writer's room, if not officially announced, um, ha- their names have been published in various pieces. Um, so that's kind of exciting. I mean, I guess we could put, I guess, a link to that news for everybody in the show notes. But I, I will say that I was very nice to see that they have some um, people who are one who served as a public defender and they do mm-hmm. have other writers who, you know, have a history of writing for various um, law shows and stuff like that. So that's very Mm -hmm. good. Yeah, there's a lot of um, law and superhero writing. CW, yeah, CW verse, which is, which is not a knock because we've had CW verse people write for Daredevil before. And I'm just excited because it it seems to be a TV writer's room. That's important. Yep. Shelby, do you want to take a hype woman moment? For your boys. Well, well, me and Christine can both take this Corman. All or right, let's do it. Christine has watched the, the show. Yeah. I won't go too much into it, but I did just finish uh, a covert rewatch. And I have no doubt that Matt Corman and Chris Ord know what they're doing and know how to uh, handle TV, light and dark, gritty and funny. Like, I, th- I just think they'll be good with handling the balance that we want from the show. Yeah. And one thing I, uh, cause I also did a recent rewatch. Like I, I watched uh, COVID affairs, I guess back when it came out, which is like a decade ago <laughs> around yes. there. Um, and I also did a, a recent um, rewatch after hearing the news of them that Corman and Nord are going to be um, the um, showrunners for the show. And one thing I, I really appreciate about their writing is that they're very good at writing dialogue. Um, mm-hmm. And they, uh, kind of, I mean, I feel like they prioritize having those meetings and moments like between different different characters feel very authentic and and kind of snappy and fun, but in a very authentic way. And again, they can also go super dark and they can do both storylines that stretch over like an entire season and they can do very episodic things. And I think they're just I mean, it's an all around really good, solid show. Uh, and 
I also assume that, I mean, that was a decade ago, they've done a, you know, presumably other things since and grown in their craft and whatever. So I'm not, I'm not the least bit worried. I'm really actually quite pleased with, with this pick. Hearing all this makes me very excited. Yeah. Um, yeah. As, yeah. As someone who has not yet jumped into the covert universe, I do appreciate the reassurance. So, <laughs> um, so what else do we know y'all? I mean, I guess this is the big thing that we, that we've known for a while now too, that Charlie and Vincent are back to um, reprise their roles as Matt Murnock and and Fisk. But a fairly major announcement that happened in recent weeks is that John Bernthal is also now officially confirmed to be returning as Frank Castle. So let's just let, let that soak in for a little bit. <laughs> it's pretty amazing news. Oh my God. I'm just so hyped. Oh gosh. Like Matt and Frank together again. Like I can't, <laughs> that's too exciting. It really is, because I know we don't want to delve too much into rumor to start with, but at first we had heard that it was going to be more Kristen Ritter playing this role. And then she got busy with uh, Orphan Black, and the, the rumors started circulating that it was going to be John, and we were like, really? Could it be? And now, and now to know for sure. I'm surprised that actually they announced it. Like I would I would have thought they'd have kept it a secret for longer, but apparently not. To be fair, Marvel Studios themselves are still not announcing anything. But the fact <laughs> that it's leached through into official trade. trades is, yeah, yeah. you know, notable that they feel comfortable enough that like, hey, we, we can put this in print. And I don't want to misquote or misattribute anything to anyone. But I could have sworn that also John Bernthal early on in the cancellation had sort of made some comments about like being a little iffy about returning to like a Disney Plus version of yeah. his show or Daredevil or whatever. Um, so feels good. Feels good to see that he's committed to this project again as this character. I don't think he'd do it if he was half-assing it or... No, he is not. John Bernthal's... Yeah, he is not a half-ass kind of guy. No. <laughs> no, no, no. No, and, and also there's something about uh, what kind of show they're aiming for. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't yet know how... <laughs> <laughs> like how savage the show is right. going to be, like right. the level of violence right. or anything. But it, the, just the fact that they're bringing in the Punisher, it, I mean, yeah, it's a pretty strong sign that they're they're not gonna. This is not going to be, as some people would put it, Disneyfied um, in a, in a negative sense. So I think that's also reassuring. Yeah, if you like John and you like his portrayal of Punisher, then you have to believe that the fact that he's on board means that they're going hardcore. I believe that. Mm -hmm. John even said in the past that his favorite version of Punisher or the, the realist version of Punisher is Daredevil season two. Absolutely. Like, yeah, he was asked at a con what was his favorite Punisher season. He said Daredevil season two. Yeah. Well, and this was facts. after <laughs> two Punisher seasons had dropped. So that was and, interesting. Uh, yeah, all, those, all those clips were coming up yesterday on the anniversary. And I'm like, it is so good. Yeah, it was pretty magical. Let's talk about the the director. Mm, yeah, I believe this came out in the Hollywood Reporter as well. You know, Hollywood Reporter has been uh, landing all those Daredevil born again scoops. I'm just gonna say I'm I'm gonna say that someone there is you know getting the good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But yes, Michael Cuesta, um, he's going to be directing, I believe, the first episode of Daredevil Born Again, um, which is always important um, in a TV show. The pilot director is essentially the person who sets the tone, the look and the tone for um, the rest of the series. We can probably safely assume he'll maybe do some more episodes or there'll be other directors coming in to do different blocks of episodes. But he, his credits include Dexter, Homeland, uh, Blue Blood, Six Feet Under, I believe a few of those were pilots as well. So this seems to be something he has a lot of experience doing. And those are all great shows. Out of all those shows, I remember the pilot for Dexter. That was a really important pilot and very popular. Yeah, so, it doesn't seem to be bringing any weak sauce to this. I mean, no, no. It's interesting too, I would say. I feel like in most of the shows on Disney Plus so far from Marvel, it's kind of been like one director for the whole mm -hmm. show. Or maybe at most two. I think She Hulk had two. I could also be. I could still be one. I don't know. But this, they seem again to be leaning into like let's let's do it how you usually do it on TV, yeah. which is. And I mean, also, yeah, we'll have different directors. Also, it might be because there's 18 episodes, so they can't 
have one person doing the entire season because logistically that is a nightmare. You have to have other directors able to prep while the current director is working on their stuff, you know? So that's why TV works the way it does because... Right. That's one of the things too that I think is so important with the 18 episodes because... Some of the criticism um, of, you know, some of the earlier uh, Disney Plus shows has been that they kind of straddle that place between like a really long movie and a really short TV show. Mm -hmm. And if you have a format that's 18 episodes, it's like there's no way you're going to. But you're going to just have to, like, forget about making anything that's, like, a a movie, movie like at all. You're going to have to commit to the television format. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> there's no in between going on there and I think that's going to be um, that's just going to I think clarify the mission for like everybody involved and I think that's going to be ho- hopefully conducive to the, <laughs> the end result and hopefully it will allow the writing and the characterization to breathe you know it, yeah. if it's 18 episodes like rumor has it that it's like arcs of 6 episodes mm-hmm. each that's what we've been hearing um, and if that's the truth, then yeah, it's, I'm, I'm excited to see. I mean, it's like three different parts of six episodes each, and overall, uh, they have the same, you know, a theme which is more uh, serialized. Too, this just this goes back to where streamers are now trying to find the TV balance again. For so long, it was a binge model, like world. Right. And now right. we're it's it's okay like in an episode where you it, whether it's Law and Order or it's Supernatural, there were standalone episodes, and it's okay to have one episode that really doesn't tie into anything at, over an overarching series. Yeah, and that's going to be the great thing about having eighteen for this one is just being able to give themselves time to tell a story that they wouldn't have had time to tell. And I think Stephen DeKnight has commented on this online when when he gets asked about like season one and the things that he could and couldn't do. But he specifically, he talked about, you know, in today's world, if, if the show was being made today, just with less episodes, they would have never done the Fisk's episode in season one. They would have never done uh, the Matt and Foggy episode because there would have to have been other things to move the story towards. So if if getting more episodes allows us to um, recapture some of those moments for Marvel TV, that's that, that's only a good thing, I think. Yeah. Well, TV just has a way of making you care about the side characters. And I think that's what I'm really excited to get back to. Like have that standalone Foggy episode or a backstory, a flashback episode. Yeah. So maybe this is a a good time to talk about, uh, speaking of side characters, we have a lot of new and unknown, well, not unknown actors, but unknown, (laughs) unknown, possibly potentially unknown characters or new characters or old characters or versions of old characters or um, from the comics uh, and beyond. We don't know. Um, But there have been a lot of um, actors added to this project. And uh, I personally, I look forward to we had such a successful addition with like uh, Reina Deem in season three mm-hmm. uh, that people just grew to love um, from that season. And he was a totally new character who's not in the comics or anything. And I I look forward to seeing more of, of that kind of thing, too, to have new characters for people to get to know uh, and appreciate. And also so that it's not like a lot of times it's always fun and a fun Easter egg when you do have a character from the comics, but it's also maybe something that will give away parts of the plot if people are expecting a certain outcome or a certain dynamic connected to that character. But if you have a brand new character, you can just be a bit more mysterious about it. Yeah, you have no expectations. Yeah. Um, So why don't we run down this list real quick of the actors that we do know that have been confirmed um, casting. Mm -hmm. So I think one of the biggest names that popped out was Michael Gandolfini. He is the son of James Gandolfini, best known for playing a young Tony in that recent Sopranos kind of prequel show, uh, The Many Saints of Newark. I think the other big name for me personally was Sandrine Holt, who I recognized um, from The Expanse and Better Call Saul. She also happens to be the only actor that we know right now that has um, a publicly confirmed character. Um, She's going to be playing Vanessa Fisk. So that's kind of a major thing that we found out recently. A few more folks on that list. Um, my apologies with name pronunciations, um, but Margarita Livieva, Michael Gaston, guess 
I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm pronouncing it like it's, it's from Beauty and the Beast. Or it could also be Gaston. It could also yeah. be Gaston. <laughs> yeah. But that's my first reference point, Gaston. <laughs> um, and Nikki M. James, who was in Severance, also seems to be like a really prolific theater actor um, and was also most recently pictured in a set photo with Charlie Cox, um, looking all lawyered up. So she could be a fellow attorney, maybe. That's me speculating. <laughs> um, but we do know that she is yeah, in this or cast. a client. She could be or who she could be representing. A real, real well-dressed client. That's true. Yeah. Too. Um, <laughs> or just someone, yeah, someone with a job in, in the court system. Exactly. There are so many jobs. So many. <laughs> yes, there are. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, it's, um, and, and just to be clear, like, these are just the folks that we know. These are the folks that I, th- I think um, a bunch of them were um, name checked in casting announcements, but also in that article that talked about the director, um, they were listed as being on the call sheet. Just to kind of give a summary of what a call sheet is, um, it's essentially a document production uses to um, outline the schedule for the cast and crew for that day's shoot. So I think a lot of this information people are probably seeing in articles are maybe information people are seeing on call sheets. What I kind of glean from that, though, is a call sheet is not something that would reflect the entirety of the production. So there are probably many actors, many roles that we will not know about um, for a while um, because they're not going to be on that day's call sheet. So if someone's looking at it and they see Michael, Margarita, Michael, Oh, there's two Michaels <laughs> in this yeah. in this uh, announced cast so far. That doesn't really mean anything other than that they were on set that day to shoot their scenes. So I think that's a helpful re- reminder for us, especially since this this production is going to go on for quite a while. That we're going to continue to hear info and we're going to continue to get quote unquote leaks and to just remember that we're not seeing the full picture because we really can't unless we're um, involved in that production. So we wish though, right? We wish. <laughs> <laughs> The thing is, some of those returning, possibly returning characters or actors, they will not announce because didn't they keep Winston's involvement with season two a secret as Mm -hmm. well? Yeah. So I guess the one thing that we do know that is a bit of a bummer um, is that Chris Brewster isn't returning to Double Charlie and Daredevil Born Again. It's definitely something that we were hoping would happen. You know, when the show got announced that it was returning um, as as many of you are aware, if you listen to us or follow the campaign, obviously our our hope and our goal was always to have as many people return as possible. Um, it's been a while. So, you know, these things are not always realistic. Um, in Chris's case, you know, we were hoping that given the more behind the scenes nature of his role, that he might have an opportunity to return. But I guess it just wasn't in the cards for this one. What do you guys think about it? Their work together had got to a point where it was like seamless, the switching out. They knew each other so well. So I was really just hoping for it. Just just even for just for that reason alone, yeah. not to have to get to know a brand new person. I know there are probably a million, well, not a million, but a lot of qualified, <laughs> you know, yeah. stunt people. I'm sure Disney Marvel have qualified stunt people, but I just their relationship is why I really just hoped it would continue. Yeah. And they've always supported each other so much. So, I mean, I love. We all love Chris uh, as the stunt double, and it was a little disappointing to find out. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, yeah, we, we were definitely disappointed, and we've been very sort of vocal about wanting him to come back and, mm-hmm. and uh, for them to do it again. I wonder if it's going to maybe affect the look of things, if we're going to notice that the style of the fighting is a little bit different. Uh, that may very well be the case, and we also don't know how much CGI they're going to they're gonna do. We don't, I mean, there's a lot stuff we don't know but i also think that uh while this is disappointing news i think it's important not to sort of catastrophize too much i mean there are many very qualified uh stunt performers out a there million, and, I just say yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. if not a huh? million then at least a few thousand yeah yeah which is still but, yeah. a lot which is a lot of people um, and you know what? I would be excited to hear if this comes out before the show comes out. I would be very curious to hear who is the stunt coordinator who's doing fight yeah, choreography. Yeah, and we do know too that that Charlie was campaigning like really hard for Chris. Yeah, to make his return. Yeah, and if we know anything about Charlie, he's he's advocating for his people. You know, um, so I would believe that he did that here too. Always. And Chris, Chris was uh, Chris is a generous person when it comes to his time, and I just I just want him to know that we still love him. Yeah, he's given us a lot. Um, so we we're always going to be Team Chris Brewster <laughs> here. Absolutely, absolutely. But at the same time, I would 
say, I mean, think about the original show is that everyone loved the grounded feel of the show. But as you find out from recent comments, like, like Stephen DeKnight tweeted some, a while back that, uh, oh, if he had even a small percentage of the CGI budget that Disney Plus has, he would have loved to have used it in season one to, you know, make some of the, those more comic booky fight scenes or um, to translate them on screen in a way. And I know there's always going to be an argument about, oh, too, is it going to be too CGI heavy or is it going to be too grounded? If you can find a good balance between the two, I believe it could be a good thing. And I think Charlie has also mentioned that in some interviews recently. Yeah. I also think there's, uh, I mean, I'm also hopeful that whatever direction they go in, they're, they're not, I would think that they would be smart enough to stay away from anything that would be too jarring. Um, I mean, you can make minor tweaks to how you want to do things, but if it's too jarring, that's going to kind of attract the wrong kind of attention. You still probably want to make it feel seamless and, and sort of taking place in the same-ish universe as um, as the first show. I mean, if you are bringing back the same actors and everything, I, exactly. I can only assume that's, that's what you're going for. Agreed. Yeah, I don't, I don't want any Daredevil movie-level stunt scenes. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> So um, does that just about cover it for what we do know? I think so. Um, why don't we talk a little bit, a little bit about what we don't know, like what we actually don't know. Yeah. Um, here's one thing that we actually don't know. We don't know whether Eldon and Deb are going to return as Foggy and Karen. Um, there was a mention in one of the recent Hollywood Reporter articles that, you know, they weren't on the call sheet or they weren't in roll call. And I think there was a speculative note in that piece that like, perhaps this means that they're not coming back. Perhaps this means that the roles will not be there or they'll be recast or whatnot. And I, I want to emphasize that that was very speculative on the, uh, on the part of the writer. A lot of other outlets kind of ran with that. So it started out ambiguous and then a lot of people just, or a lot of other outlets kind of emphasized, not the ambigu ambiguity, but sort of the, the subtle kind of between the lines implication that was put in there to begin with. And then it kind of, yeah, got ahead of the story a little bit. Yeah. The little game of press telephone. Yeah. 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 Um, which to kind of take it back to our little explainer of call sheets and, and such, you know, and a reminder that this is going to be a very long shooting process that just because they are not shooting right now um, in the beginning, that's only been two weeks um, does not mean that they may not show up later. It could also still mean that they might not show up at all, but we just want to emphasize that we just don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We don't even we don't even know in what order they're shooting. Exactly. Yeah, they might not. They are. They're probably actually not shooting um, in chronological order. They're probably trying to get all their on location stuff done, and they're probably then going to go back and and shoot a lot of stuff, um, you know, on sets. So you know, we just we just don't know and. I guess here at Save Daredevil, we, we kind of are like, okay with that. We're okay with um, sitting a little bit with the unknown, only because we had to do that for a long time. Oh, yeah. We're experts at that. I know. <laughs> kind of experts at it, but it's okay to be surprised, I think, and not know every single thing that's coming out about the show. Yeah, I know. I know we live in the world of need to know. We think we need to know in the know. Uh, sometimes it's cool to not know. You can still be surprised. I, I want to be yeah. surprised. So, yeah, we, we know that there have been moments um, in the past few weeks that um, emotions have run a little high. Um, and want to remind you all that we we love Eldon and Deb as much as I've, as much as everyone else. And so we, we are certainly still rooting for their return. And we're just going to wait and find out. So one other thing that we don't know that we've sort of mentioned before is we don't know a lot of the roles that um, these actors are playing. Um, we don't know why Sandrine Holt is replacing um, Ayelet Zurer. I think there were some rumors initially that came up that maybe sh there were some potential schedule conflicts. I think it's important to emphasize that recasting in the MCU in particular does not mean multiverse or change in canon. Um, but I think I've, I mentioned um, earlier, I love Sandrine. I've been a big fan of the work that I've seen from her. So I'm very eager to see how she takes on this role. Of course, again, same with Chris. I I'm disappointed that Isla isn't going to be reprising because I truly loved um, 
her chemistry with Vincent D'Onofrio. But based on what I've seen of Sandrine too, I think she is definitely prepared to like step it up and bring some great energy um, into the role. I was excited for Sandrine before I knew any of this, actually, because, you know, just her being a- attached to Daredevil Born Again, I was very excited because I Sandrine is a great actress. Yeah, I was looking at her IMDb and she's done a lot of TV, a lot. And also on the note of like how a recasting doesn't mean that it's you know, multiverse variants or anything like that. I mean, it's been done in the MCU, in the movies um, as well. Uh, and so it's not like I know, because especially with with the state of the current MCU and how Jared <laughs> Daryl put into it all of it, it's always like, is it a right. variant? Is it like, what happened with the blip and the snap and the, you know, is there a, like a loophole, a dimension yeah, travel, yeah. you know, there's <laughs> all of that. And who knows? Who knows yeah. what they're going for exactly? Yeah. But this news in and of itself is like. They do look pretty similar. They have a similar vibe, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like not to us, probably, but to, like, an outsider. I don't know that right. if you show her picture, they know that that's not old Vanessa. But I think you do bring up a good point. It's, it's just easy to get caught up right now in what they're trying to do in the MCU. Like, oh, could it be, like, all of these crazy things? But I tend to think, at least with this show, it's going to probably be the simplest explanation, which is just that they needed to replace the actress because they couldn't get the original one. <laughs> and so maybe it's like, ah, maybe this doesn't need to be, like, overthought. Not everything needs to be a, what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean for the for the entirety of the MCU? And yeah. The fabric, the, of, the, uh, the fabric of the universe is like unraveling. <laughs> yeah. Is the old show canon or not? Like, who knows? Like, we, we think, you know, all, all the comments from the cast that we keep reading about are saying oh, the same characters, continuation. A lot of these traits are also talking about continuation. Even the comment Michael Gandolfini says is that we just shoot in New York and people are going to be really happy to see these characters that we previ- previously saw in a Netflix series in the MCU. Mm. You can yeah. take... He's brought it into he's the MCU nice. already. Yes, that. However you want to it. <laughs> Thanks, right. Michael. Thank you, Michael. Michael, <laughs> Michael, num- Michael number one. <laughs> Michael number one. The OG. The OG, Michael. <laughs> I, I think that, it, as you can tell, we're really trying to keep an open mind kind of keep a level head about it. If you want to go see what people are saying about who's playing who, what does this mean? There's a lot of conversation out there. Just personally here, we're like, you know what? We're okay waiting, waiting to learn more. So, um, but again, this seems like so far of what we know, a lot of great people are involved. There's going to be hopefully a lot of great stories being told. Um, and we're just generally hype about production starting up again and getting to learn even more as the weeks go on. And I guess we can kind of segue now into talking about just, you know, maybe some general thoughts about what we um, expect from production and the show now that we're finally in it. I think we've, we've kind of had variations of this conversation before, but that was before we knew anything was happening or we only knew very little information like. Charlie and Vincent are back. Great. (laughs) What can we extrapolate from that? (laughs) Our victories have sort of rolled out in stages and we've, it's never been this immediate, like, that's it. You're done. We got it. You know, it's, it's been, okay, we hit the two years and okay, we got some good news. You know, uh, we're going to see Matt Murdock and and Spider-Man and okay, you know, we might get some, some more good news. You're going to get Matt Murdock and She-Hulk and all right, well, guess what? (laughs) Maybe there's going to be a show now. Maybe it'll um, be 18 episodes. Maybe it'll be 18 what? episodes. So, you know, it's it feels like they've been like slow dripping this like this uh, this amazing stuff to us. And now it's like, oh, OK, well, now they're finally shooting this 18 episode show, like kind of like don't know what to do with ourselves <laughs> now that we're finally here. But, you know, then that's going to slow drip its way to like whenever the show actually. <laughs> We've just been so chill, really. Like, yeah. They kind of have to oh, be. Oh, they, have push, to be they push back filming. You know, they push back. It was supposed to be February. Yes. Then it was the middle of February. Then it was the end of February. Like, it's happening. Just like, you know, the, the show could be possibly delayed, may not come out until 2024. It might. Who knows? But we're like, it's happening. Well, it's always been 2024. We've waited this long. We have to be Yeah, patient. but now they're saying it could be 2025. <laughs> yeah. Like, they're... Uh, yes, 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 yes. Hopefully, hopefully not. But... Hopefully, yeah. I was... I was... Um, I, you know, it's a positive surprise hearing because we've been talking about how or there's been all these rumors about how Echo is going to be mm. like really, really delayed. Like, you know, yeah. it sounded like almost a year. And now the latest bit of, I don't know, rumors slash indication 
um, was that it's going to be out in October, which I think is only a few months behind its original uh, alleged sort of speculated schedule. So hopefully if there are any delays, we're talking like a few months, not like a whole year mm-hmm. or anything. So knock on wood. <laughs> but, but yeah. Do it. We know how to fill time. We're good. Yeah. And can someone confirm or deny whether I'm remembering this correctly? Um, that I think there was like some perhaps probably still rumor um, that they were going to release the show in like arcs versus like 18 episodes in a row. That did, I have heard that in the last like little like mo- uh, weeks, months, whatever. Right. 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 So like three pods and there may even be gaps in between the releases like show, of the yeah, six shows could release in between episode pods. These six, six, six. Yeah. We could have Daredevil for like the next five six years we could they were they're really good at chess. <laughs> yeah. um yeah but you know if that does happen if that's true then they could still start the release on time but then the, maybe they're gonna shut maybe yeah. they're gonna move around right um i mean who knows the, the trailer for secret invasion come out six months ago so yeah that's an interesting one because i was actually kind of looking forward to it and then 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 there's been like no concrete info about it in a really long time i guess they had the they had most recently did they do a trailer at the super bowl i don't know i thought there might have been like a super bowl timed thing yeah i don't remember and it it could be because the movie slate sort of got mixed up a little (sighs) bit that's true yeah have to fall i don't know leave that to them they can they'll figure that out yeah i i can't think too hard about all that stuff because my brain doesn't have the capacity anymore and like didn't they finish loki season two a long time ago (laughs) like years ago (laughs) what's going on yeah i i got the sense it was wrapped i don't know if it was a long time ago but it's certainly in post right now. Um, when that releases, I have no idea when it was supposed to, where it's slotting in next to. Because there's Secret Invasion, there's, is Ironheart a this year thing or no? I, I don't think anybody knows what this year is supposed to look like anymore because they shifted Echo and then yeah. Secret Invasion was supposed to be next. And then Loki, mm-hmm. but those mm-hmm. I think might even switch. Oh, Agatha. Agatha's filming right now, yeah. For movies on the movie side, Marvel has oh, been God, delayed. Oh, God, it's switched places so many so it was times. It's supposed to come out in the summer, I think. It's coming out in it November is now. now. A year, it is yeah. a year past when it was supposed to come out. It switched places with Wakanda Forever. And so now we're, yeah, it was supposed to come out originally in November Right, and if they're doing scroll stuff, would that need to connect? It's too much. Anyway, <laughs> back to Daredevil Born Again, which hopefully is much less complicated than all the things that we just tried to parse out about um, the upcoming Phase 5 MC release schedule. <laughs> um, but let's talk about uh, a really kind of interesting little um, thing about maybe how the show might have a more procedural feel to it. How do you guys feel about that? I feel great about it. <laughs> I love it. Do I, I mean, I've liked a lot of TV shows that are like that, but I think there's also something kind of old school comics about that approach too, because a lot of the comics back in the day um, used to be more uh-huh. like that too and I know a lot of people kind of wax nostalgic about that kind of thing and I think there's a really good way to do it where you do have a definitely like a backstory that you know you maybe have little connecting scenes and elements in all of the episodes but where maybe the backstory kind of comes into focus goes out of focus and you can just kind of mix that up um, I mean I'm, I'm sure they're going to have find a nice way of doing that if that's what they're going for but i think there really are great ways to do it so i'm I'm very excited about that yeah i love that talking about going back to old school comics i like that yeah um anything else folks well you did have a really good quote from um charlie cox that maybe we should um yeah i think it's a great quote who wants to read it in charlie's voice who can channel who can channel their inner oh, charlie a, cox go, <laughs> Oh my, not Charlie's voice, but I'll, uh, okay, I'll make the attempt. <laughs> okay, so it's a really good Charlie Cox quote. He said, I'm imagining there's going to be an, an element to it that is like the old school procedural show. Not necessarily case of the week, but something where we go really deep into Matt Murdock, the lawyer, and get to see what his life is like. If that's done right, and he really gets his hands dirty with that world, I think there's something quite interesting about that. To spend a lot of time in a superhero's day-to-day life, and you really earn the moment. 
when he suits up. Yeah, I feel like we're going to get a lot of like good Charlie morsels um, over the course of this year, especially since like Charlie, Vincent, and John are going on their oh, like yeah. U.S. tour of regional cons. You know, <laughs> the Daredevil, yeah, the Daredevil comeback tour, and they're going to say stuff. You know, they're going to say stuff. Maybe well, you know whether or not they manage to hold most of it back, but I feel like they're going to get excited and they're going to like they're, they're just going to drop little things for us. So. I'm highly anticipating that. The first one, the first one is next week in Orlando, I think. Hold on, there. Wait a second. There is Richmond. Yeah, like Richmond is before. Which one's before Richmond? No, no, Richmond is before. Before. Okay, like, okay. Like so we're, we're still getting some next week. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're all a bit worried about their work-life balance with all these cons they're doing. I mean, it is like it's a very hectic schedule. I'm like thinking back to like when they were shooting. They've never done this many. Well, I mean, clearly they signed some kind of contract with the parent company of like GalaxyCon, you know, <laughs> to like, hey, why don't you do all these stops? But it's just like wild that they're doing so many during what will be like a very um, rigorous and highly anticipated shoot. It's like, imagine if they kept throwing Charlie into cons while he was shooting like No Way Home or like before No Way Home release. Like, <laughs> it's just like... He- like that one con that he did, I think he did London. Um, he was already bombarded by people who were like, so are you in it? Are you in it? You know, okay, well, can you tell us? And now they're shooting the show and they're just going to keep showing up like every two weeks. I guess it's good practice. Do you think this is Marvel's strategy to see how much they can stay like? <laughs> yeah, but but speaking of, we are going to have um, some of our people there uh, at least one of these stops. Um, oh, two. No, two. Sorry. Uh, I take that back. Um, we're going to have some folks in Philly and we're going to have some folks in Dallas. And I believe both of those are in June. Um, so just before San Diego Comic-Con, we're going to do some pre-gaming. <laughs> we're going to get prepared. So we'll if, if anything happens at those cons, we will definitely be posting on social media to let everyone know. Um, but for sure, if you see um, any of our folks there in our shirts, uh, they're bound to have some swag. Like, please say hi um, and just get excited with us about meeting and Charlie, Vincent and John. So, yeah. Yeah. And we're also going to be at um, San Diego Comic-Con with like a record sized crew. We are bringing the, like, yet. <laughs> the most to San Diego Comic-Con this year. We are we are going out the kitchen. We're bringing it out the kitchen. We're bringing it into San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're definitely hoping to get some really good stuff at this year's Comic Con. Um, as Christine said, you know, if the Echo release date is in the fall, maybe we'll get some updates with Echo. Maybe this will be the first San Diego Comic Con appearance for the Daredevil Board Again cast and creative team. That is what we're hoping. Um, there's no D23 this year. Um, so this is kind of like the big uh, public press media moment um, of the summer. Um, and it would be really well-timed because they'll they'll have some footage. Um, they'll have people to bring. Um, there's, there's a lot that we know. There's a few things we don't know. But what we really do know is that we remain extremely excited about what is to come for Daredevil Born Again. Um, and yeah, anyone else have anything to add before we wrap it up? No, just that. It's going to be an exciting year. <laughs> We're going to have all these little nuggets of information, as you, you know, alluded to. And um, yeah, it's just going to be, um, it'll be an interesting ride. And we're also just, um, you know, we've been talking about, like, how much, how, how much do we want to know? Like, we, you know, it's great getting all these uh, sneak peeks, but it's like, we also don't want to know too much. And it's uh, it's kind of an interesting. Well, that is true. And, and just to also, like, reiterate here... You know, we are purposely not going to be like reposting people's like surprise set visits um, and kind of anything that's not like official. You know, we're really trying to stick to sticking to what's coming from official sources, official publications. Um, We're also really trying to focus on our space being a space to look forward to what's coming next. So we understand that everyone is they have their own feelings and approach to this. Um, ultimately, we're all fans. So ultimately, we can all eventually share in some good vibes together. Um, but just to kind of as a reminder, like our policy is just, you know, we're, we're just going to stick to what we know and not marinate too much on what we don't know. <laughs> right. 
Yeah, yeah, just go, yeah, going off what Phyllis just said, like we are fans and it is hard. I want it all and I don't want to know anything at the same time. But I also just want to say with all the information that is coming out, remember, it is just little snippets. You're you're probably not going to get full context and just don't be afraid to be excited and be hopeful. And, you know, you may love this thing even more than you love the last thing. Who knows? Yeah, my my advice would be to stay positive and keep an open mind. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> thank you again, ladies, for joining me. Thank you. No, it's been so long. We're not going to be this this long again. We're not going to. We're, not- <laughs> we're very hopeful that we will have more and more opportunities to come back and and chat and shoot the shit <laughs> and um, just again just have a fun time talking about this thing that we love. Um, so if you aren't already, we hope that you're following us on social media. We are Saved Daredevil on Twitter. And we are Save Daredevil um, everywhere else. We are also posting stuff on our website from time to time at savedaredevil.com. Oh, we also have a TikTok, which I believe is also Saved Daredevil. So, you know, you know, you can find us almost anywhere. We are going to try to stay on top of any pertinent news that comes about the show. So if you need a source for stuff that isn't going to be too spoilery um, and kind of just get straight to the heart of the facts, um, make sure you give us a follow. So uh, that's it. We're going to sign off for now and we will be back for the next one soon. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Talk Daredevil. For more information about Saved Daredevil, including links to our socials, please visit us at savedaredevil.com. Remember, Murdoch's always get back up.